you, you can walk any faster if you can talk it. I say, the only thing I know how to do fast is fucking rush. I hate that. I Why y'all like that? Yeah, you gotta ask the faster guy. Why he actually like that, Chief. He walked into the stadium. Yeah. He walked into the stadium one time. He would walk fast. He had McDonald's in his hands, too. I was late. You late? Okay. <laughs> I'm late to walk. I'm fine. I just started walking fast in life, bro. It make y'all get, what, two hours before the game? Tyreek, you don't need to be at the game before two hours? How we doing? What type of warm ups you do? That's good. Respect. Yes, sir. I got a warm up. Hold on, Chief. We have to see y'all. Hey, the same no more, huh? Mm -mm. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you, Appreciate uh, y'all having me on, man. Appreciate you. When you was yes, back sir. in uh, South Georgia, running the one and the two in high school, you didn't have to warm up like that. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. But this year, I, I really, like, I'm really, like, working with the uh, strength and conditioning guys, warming up and stuff like that, you know? And it paid off for me, man. I promise you. What them Fast Fridays hit you like? Like, you got to do anything extra to get ready for Friday practice? Well, our Fridays are different from when I was in KC. See, Fast Fridays in KC was like Fast Friday. You know, you get in, get your work in, you do your plays, and you're gone. In Miami, it's like we, we doing walk-through tempos. Uh -huh. It's like, bro, I need to be moving, bro. Right. I'm trying to get home. <laughs> wow. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. So for all of you that don't know, the guy behind the shades is Tyreek Hill. This is Channing Crowder. I'm RC. That's Freddie T. This is The Pivot. Uh, we've been pivoting a little bit already. This year, bro, I thought you were going to get 2,000. I think, first off, to say something like that and then play the way that you did, that's difficult. Because it ain't like people don't show up to the arena and know, OK, they're going to throw him this ball. When he's in this condensed split, this is the route. Yep. Right when he burst to number one, this is the route, and you continue to beat people. How difficult was it to deal with when you got banged up, though, knowing the sort of record-setting season you were on? Mentally, it was tough, man, for me. You know, um, obviously, I had set out goals, individual goals for myself, and then, you know, when it happened, you know, I didn't feel it, obviously, because um, it happened in the New York Jet game. Mm -hmm. So when it happened, my adrenaline was still running. I was still playing fast, but y'all played before I played. Y'all know as soon as the game is over with, that next morning, yeah. it's like you try to get out of bed. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, man, what? And I couldn't walk, and it's like, bro, that just messed me up mentally. And I'm a speed guy. My, like, my feet, my ankles, my hamstrings are the most important, you know, asset to my speedy. And that just literally messed me up, man, for the rest of the year. So. I, I tried not to let it get in my head too much, man. My family, they, they, they was encouraging me, you know what I'm saying? They really helped me, you know, get my mind right, get back on the field. And yeah, because my their whole thing was like, hey, we need you. Hey, we need you, bro. Like, no time to make excuses. You tell your kids that, don't you sit here and do it, you know? Yep. Don't be that guy, so. Did you soak a little bit, though? Like, did you get, did you get in your feelings? Because people think because we're used to injury, that mm -hmm. they happen, you bounce back, and everybody's ready to go the next morning, even if they can't play, even if they don't feel good emotionally and mentally, they're prepared to get themselves back. For you, did you ever have a feeling of almost having the poor me's, having a pity party, just realizing what that did to some of the opportunities you had? Yeah, it, it sucked, man. It sucked, man, because um, when you when you so used to, you know, playing at a different speed or doing things a certain way and then you have like something like this happen it's like all of that goes out of the window you know i'm not i'm no longer 100 percent 90 percent or whatever the case may be because um, i'm not able to move or you know run a certain kind of way and you know when you play against other guys they they're gonna take advantage of that and it's <laughs> like bro like <laughs> ah so i <laughs> I mean, of course, like I, I've had, I have my moments, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like if I get locked up on a play, it's like, bro, like I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm, I'm out here for the team. I, I get it. My ankle hurt, but I ain't going to make excuses because that's me though. Right. You feel me? Like, yeah. I'm going to take it on the chin and then I'm going to come back and whoop your ass the next play though. <laughs> really? How you call, how you call your shot like that? You talking about when he said, I'm, I'm going to get 2,000. That's, that's something you talking about the dudes you playing, best players in the world. Uh -huh. You said it preseason. You knew what was going to happen. How did you call that? Mike McDaniel, Tua, 
Like you called your shot. How, how, why were you so confident and knowing, bro? I can go get two two racks. It's just the people inside of our building, man. Like um, everybody do a great job of you know uh, motivating each other, and you know just the people around, like um, offensive talent that we got around. You know that helps me out a lot. You know a lot of people may say, oh, he just run fast and do this, Mike McDaniel. Yeah, like I. I don't do nothing. I just go out there and run fast and catch the ball. Like, they make my job look easy. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our uh, head coach, he does a great job of, you know, game planning. The whole organization, they do a great job of game planning and putting us in position to make plays. And when you have Waddle, when you have Mostert, yeah. when you have A-Chain, you know, when you, then when you got Tua who throws a receiver-friendly pass, it's like everything just checks out, man, for, for me to be able to succeed and get 2,000 yards. Um, and then our offensive line, too, though, you throw them in. Um, at the beginning of the season when nobody's hurt. You know, everybody coming in fresh and it just, like I said, it just made my job a whole lot easier. You had two seasons with more than 1,700 yards. We had Coach McDaniels on the show and he had nothing but high praise. But your, your receivers coach, Wes Welker, who played with Randy Moss, right. he had the highest praise yeah. when he said, you're the best receiver he ever seen. Mm -hmm. And we had a debate with Floyd Mayweather about Jerry Rice, who's the GOAT? Jerry Rice, <laughs> Randy Moss. I gotta whatever. say Moss. I gotta say Moss. I mean, you're gonna say, but, gonna say Moss, but that's not where I'm going, but thank you for that. Oh, yeah. We appreciate you for that. I love Jerry, though. I love Jerry. I'm a part of GOAT Fuel or whatever. I love Jerry. I appreciate that. Thank you for the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? But growing up as a kid, Moss. Man. So Moss is your GOAT? Moss is my GOAT, man. And then AB. Okay. A lot of people may not like that, but AB for me, Tell man. Tell me, I played with him and I. I had the, had the greatest statistical six-year run of any wide receiver yeah. in the history of the game. And there were things, we obviously know some of the off-the-field stuff, some of the things he went through. As a receiver, tell me why you say that about A.B., because I agree that I think, he, I think he's one of the best ever pound-for-pound -pound players that's played in this league. I, I mean, for me, though, being like a younger player and just looking up to A.B. and actually knowing A.B. earlier in my career, um, I would just watch watch him like outside of you know people knowing him you know what i'm saying and building like that younger brother relationship and he taught me a lot man from me just working my tail off because if you if, if you really like watch ab whenever he was on his six year run or whatever he worked his tail off he worked with a lot of people outside of his antics off, off the field like the guy is really like um a true underdog story for yeah. real though we and you know i i just try to model myself after you know everything that he did for like all the short receivers across the league because it, it, it's tough to be a shorter receiver in the league, man. Like when I first got to Kansas City, it was a lot of things that they didn't want me to do because I, I was like, oh, you're not a certain height. And then it got to a point where like I had to do one-on-ones every day or work my tail off every day to, to, to show them that, hey, I may not be 6'4", 6 6'1", 6 or 6'2", but I'm able to get to this spot and catch the ball and I may even score with that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Yo, 6'2", receiver, he just gonna catch it. Yeah. Me. I'm going to catch that motherfucker and I'm going to try to get drunk off the yak. And that's something that I try to model my game off of AB. You yeah. feel me? Because he just, dude, dude, the inspiration to me, man. We all, we all agree with you on the AB sentiments. You know, he's amazing talent. Uh, and you're talking about your hard work, which is the reason for those comments from Wes. He right. sees you every day. He saw Moss every day. When you hear those comments, what or how does that make you feel? That's just some bullshit, man. We get in that receiver room, man. Wes has changed that shit up on my ass. <laughs> for real. For my position coach to, to say that about me, that makes me feel amazing, man. Um, but I, I still know that I got a long way to go, you know, to, to be able to accomplish the same, some, some of the things that those guys have done, man. Like, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface now. Going to Kansas City really helped me out, you know, helped me learn the game a lot. And then just being in Miami, just transferring into a new role as a leader. Um, and just trying to help the younger guys out become better, man. So, yeah, I got a long way to go, I feel like, before I enter into that realm of receivers. We all know that, you know, you're a dog, and I want to get into sort of the underdog story as we go forward. But this year on Hard Knocks, you talked about working to mature as a man. You know, and they had you sitting at your kitchen table. You were trying to do business deals and do some some other things outside of the football field, become the family man you wanted to be. How much do you feel you've grown since entering the league and having people question who the person Tyreek Hill was mm -hmm. to where you are now? 
It's tough, man. I tell you what, like, um, from where I was and to where I am now, it's probably like, um, it, it, it's just a testament to God. My whole career, well, my whole entire life, all I ever wanted to do was just play football. You know, I grew up in the church. My grandparents took me to church every day. I played the drums in the church. <laughs> Lee sang in the church, praise danced, all that, man. And, you know, God blessed me with everything that I ever wanted. You know, I made it to the NFL. I'm meeting some of my favorite, you know, icons, legends or whatever. And I'm making a name for myself. And going from look here to entering the league to I just had like a couple bad years of just losing myself. Like, I feel like I lost my true, I lost my true self, you know what I'm saying? Like from what my grandparents raised me to be when I, when I entered the league and I, I completely forgot, you know, my relationship with God. And it really showed, it really showed, man. Like, I mean, I, I met my wife now. When, when I first got into the league, that's when I met my wife. That was before Tyreek here, before anything. And then we got engaged and now we're married. And I kind of had a few rough years where I said I lost my relationship with God and I fell off. And then I just told myself, man, as, as the years went on, it was like, bro, at some point, man, like you gotta, you gotta make a commitment to God, bro, at some point, because he has given you all these great things and you have yet to serve him the same way your grandparents taught you. And this year, well, last year, starting at the beginning of last year, when I got signed with the Dolphins, I made a commitment to myself, me and my wife. I said, we're going to build our relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go to church every Sunday and every Wednesday, and I, and I have been doing that. Um, I'm going to clean my life up, no partying, no girls, and everything has been perfect, man. Like, everything I, I've ever wanted has ever, it's, it's starting to come back for me. You feel me? Because having, cause having off-field situations, you lose a lot of opportunities. Yep. But me being able to clean up my life, you know, show people who I really am, because that's what the Chiefs got. When I first got to the Chiefs, the Chiefs got, you know, happy, um, eager to learn, eager to, you know, just be me, man, like a church going kid. But then that slowly drifted off as the success began to come. Mm -hmm. And my, my real, grandparents, bro. they was like, hey, slow down now. Slow yeah. you, slow down. Yeah. And I, I didn't listen. And it kept going, kept going, kept going until now it's like, all that stuff is not even worth it sometimes, bro. Like you got, like you got everything you need. You feel me? God will put everything you need in front of you, and He has done that. You know, from my wife, my kids, my support system with my grandparents, and so far it's been awesome, man. What do you think it was though? But you said success was it the money, was it the success, was it the attention? Yeah, it, yeah, I, I would say that. Um, I, I just didn't know how to deal with it. Like I didn't know how to like control it. I didn't know how to control like the success the money, the women. I didn't know how to control any of it. I just let it all get to me. You feel me? Like, then when my boys come around, it'll be like, hey, man, like, where we going tonight? And it's like, it's on, it's on me. I mean, I ain't gonna spend no money on them, but you know what I'm saying? I don't get nobody no money. You feel me? But when it's time to go have a good time, we are going, we sliding. You feel me? And it was like, I put, I put that as the most important thing instead of putting what's in, important, you know what I'm saying? Which is my family. You feel me? Granted, I'm a family man. I'm always spend time with them, but it's like, they're gonna be there. Like, just let them be over there, and you're gonna spend time with your beautiful wife, your beautiful kids. You'll be all right, man. So, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just wanted to try to play the middleman of both, when really I was really on this side with the friends instead of being on this side. It's like the, like the Bible says about being lukewarm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, that, you know, gotta spit you out. Like, I think it is difficult for that. I know you had something, though, Freddie T. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, I know Chan kind of beat me to it, because I wanted to ask him, is it really more money, more problem? I mean, we made a lot of money, but you made a lot, making a lot of money, <laughs> the $100 million, like, that's crazy. But certain things are serve as a reminder to get you back to, you know, where you need to be. Right. So to ensure that you don't lose those blessings. I wanted to kind of get into, me, I'm, I'm a fan. And I'm a fan of your speed and all that you do on the field and everything else. But there was once upon a time, it was a story of a man who outran a cheetah uh -huh. in a 120 yard race. A 120 yard race. A right. real cheetah? A cheetah accelerates zero to 60 in three seconds. How long? So a, a guy outran a real cheetah? Yes, in 120 yards. That's no way. He was just inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. You talking about Devin Hester? Devin Hester. <laughs> man. 
No, I'm serious, bro. Friend, I don't know it about was, that. It was, it, was, it, was, it was 30 yards, and it was down, back, down, back, and he beat the cheater. Well, it, asked, it was done by National Geographic. He told the cheater to run the shuttle. I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling he outran the cheater. I just asked him if he knew the story. <laughs> I never heard that story. By the way, if you want to confirm anything, me and Devin Hester had the same special team coordinator. My, I, so I had Dave Toll, who was with the Chiefs. Uh -huh. And Devin Hester had Dave Toll when he was in Chicago. I asked, I said, Coach Toll, who found it? Keep it 100 with me. He was like, obviously you, man. But Devin is the better returner, though. That kind of hurt me when he said that. <laughs> I was like, bro, what? He was like, yeah, man, Devin's the better returner. Do you ever miss returning? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, so, sometimes I do, you know what I'm saying? Because in, in the return game, there'd be so many opportunities out there, you feel me? And all you got to do is really just beat the gunners and you, you home, man. Just run by the fast guys, because the big guys like Channing, they can't, they can't break. Like, <laughs> hey, you, you talking about neck, bro. I ran up on Devin at UM, hey, look. and he got the hell on. <laughs> <laughs> look how easy you said it, though. All you got to do is beat the gunners. If it was that simple, it would be more people other than Devin Hester who just got inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I have a question. You mentioned people try to take advantage of when you're not 100%. And the first thing came to mind when you said that was Legereus Sneed. Mm -hmm. He's crossed the line from you. He's in press coverage. Jump jams you. You fall. You get up. Say a little something. You throw a little push. When you, when you are in moments like that, knowing how good you are, how talented you are, how fast, how explosive, people don't normally get their hands on you like that. Right. When that happens, is it a little bit of, or of embarrassment? Are you pissed off? Do you want to throw hands? How does something like that make you feel in that moment? I mean, for me, man, um, I, was, I was definitely pissed off. But at the same time, though, I got to be mindful that the game continues, though. The game has to continue. I can't let no kind of feelings between me and you, you know what I'm saying, happen. Cause you going cause you may win some reps and I'ma win, I'm gonna win some reps. But at the end of the day, I gotta make sure I win I got I win more reps than you. You feel me? So at that moment it was just like, damn, this dude really just jammed the shit out of me in this damn cold. <laughs> like your hands don't hurt, bro. You feel me? So what's going on? Yeah. But we got back to the sideline. Like, as soon as I sat down, motherfucker brought the iPad to me and was like, Reek, this you right here? I was like, hey, bro, not right now, not right now, bro. Not right now, not right now, not right now. Not right now. I was hoping nobody seen it, but apparently everybody seen it. Yeah, that, that, that the, the close-up joint on you, man, it was an ISO cam on y'all, too. I mean, it's two all pros, but we are here now, man, and you said during the season that you felt the team you were on mm -hmm. was better than the Kansas City Chiefs team. That okay. you were on. Yeah. When you look at the, the talent and those things. So, what is the difference? Because that team reached the ultimate goal. Right. And this Miami team did not. Well, um, it just, I will say this the Kansas City team is a much more, you know, older team, yeah. uh, more, more, more veteran team. And their coaching staff has a little bit more experience than, you know what I'm saying? So, we, we got a young team. They got a, they got us. A little bit older team, I feel like they got an older coaching staff. We got a kind of a, a younger coaching mm -hmm. staff, man. So um, it just takes, you know, reps. You know, I feel like the more opportunities that we, you know, um, continue to produce for ourselves, which is making it to the playoffs, we'll be better, man. Yeah. And then also, we just got to win, you know, those key games. Like we lost against the Titans, we were supposed to win that one. Lost against the Bills, we were supposed to win that one. If we win those two games, then we're not talking about Kansas City. We're talking about a whole other situation. We're talking about a home playoff game in Miami. So mm -hmm. if we just take care of the games that we're supposed to take care of, then we'll be all right. Now, we are, I will say, we are the Dolphins are, is a better team than the Chiefs, though. So. I'm thinking of the Chiefs teams you were on. You say the Dolphins were better than the team that beat y'all this year. Yes. No, that's not true. Yes. Tyreek, the, the, you, yes. you played them. <laughs> Yes. Bro. You played them. I did. You, you're doing shows with us very well, might I add, and they're in the Super Bowl. Hey, the better team don't always go to the Super Bowl. That's all I got to say. See, that's why you my dog and my neighbor. I love that. We, I felt like only we was better than the who, Titans. Only people who've never gone to the Super Bowl say that, so I'm we, shocked. We can't to talk it. like this the every episode. The better team always don't go to the Super Bowl. The team that gets more points wins the game, Bree. 
And now y'all got Alicia back here talking about so what that y'all, truth. So, so what y'all saying, the Ravens, the Chiefs are better than the Ravens? Yeah, because they beat them. Man, come on. Bro, man. the Ravens was dope. I had we picked them. We shit, did it. Picked them, but they, but the Chiefs beat the Ravens. This shit, any given Sunday, you know it. It's any given Sunday, man. Whichever team is prepared the best and got that mindset to go out there and dominate, that's, that, that's what team going to win. You feel me? That's what team going to win. Yeah. I, I just feel that way. I, the Ravens are... I don't even know their team, but if you look at them defensively, both defenses match up real good, right? Yep. Then you look at the offense, like, Ravens offense are way better, bro. Now you got Pat and Kelsey, but besides that, like, but I think we better than the Chiefs, though. You mentioned Pat and, uh, and Trav. Why, you didn't like being uh, the side chick? No, nah, I ain't like that. I, ain't, I really didn't enjoy that too much, man. You see, I'm used to being the main chick, for real. Man. I've been like that my whole life, man. My homes and my auto. You could have been my auto. <laughs> there you go. You made it to Miami. You took on a leadership role, even being vocal, you know, going on out, out on a limb, yeah. talking about your quarterback and how well, you know, he throws the ball, precision, accuracy, the, the whole thing. You even... I believe you tweeted after somebody said your QB was thicker than a snicker. I'm so glad we got it. We getting into that now, bro. <laughs> yeah, why did you say that about him, bro? <laughs> like, why did you say that, man? I mean, we here, man. We having a good I mean, time. Tua, Tua, Tua built different. He is. I got my man back. I so will. I will say this. Tua does gain weight easy. Like, for me knowing him. Yeah, well, so the, my closest teammate when I played was Troy Palomalu, who's uh -huh. also Polynesian. Uh -huh. And I've been to American Samoa twice for camps. Like, there are bigger people, yeah. right? That's why you see so many of the Polynesians that have been great football players and NFL players have played D-line and offensive line. And so I fell into being into the, in the locker room. Right, yeah, because yeah. if I'm if I'm a Miami Dolphins and we in the locker room and we make a joke or whatever like that, that's a joke I tell, right? And talking about two, and that's a that's something that you know I've said to Troy or we say to Casey Hampton because he was like Channing all the time when he talks about me, he treats me like I'm a stripper, right? Like we 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 in a restaurant. <laughs> one, he built like an ant that stands up on his back feet. Yeah, like yeah, we we in a restaurant one time. We closed the Bruh. restaurant down. He's screaming my name because he's like, man, I don't want you to get kidnapped because they're gonna try to f you. They'll abduct him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I'll, I'll, okay. yeah, so, so you know what I mean. So the so my mindset up there, like it was happening quick. You know what I mean? I was like, dang, Tua, like he's thick. And I was like, and it's kind of all lower half. And I was just like, like a chick that worked at Onyx. And it just kind of sort of came out. And I moved on from it. That's it. You moved on. You know on, what I'm saying? Huh? Like, to me, it was just, you say a little joke, you move on. Now I give my analysis on how he plays football. And when it all blew up, I was like, damn. And at first, like, like any other thing, yeah. you want to defend your stance. Right? So I was like, I really was just joking. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal to me. And then you start to see more people get upset about it. And the next thing is, like, all of us who consider ourselves tough individuals, I was like, well, I would tell him that, right? Like, I'd say it to him, which I would. And then the adult in me goes, but if something I say on you TV... You ready to get aggressive. Yeah, well, I was. <laughs> you ready to get if, aggressive. If, if, something I say, if something I say on TV or about now. someone is taken that way and I didn't mean it to have that effect, I also uh -huh. got to be an adult and say I'm wrong and have that awareness. And so I did, and we, we talked on the phone, and we chopped it up, but I swear to you, Reek, it really was just like watching them play. I was like, dang, Tua, Tua got a little thick. And then the way my mind works, you know, I was like, oh, and I said that, and it goes away. But yeah, man, it became a bigger deal. Right, it was and my a big man, deal. They were talking about man was gonna use his judo on me. Man, yeah. them boy had posters of you in the locker room. <laughs> and everything, boy. Hey, hey, you were gonna get it, bro. You were gonna get it, bro. He was like, the next time he say my name on TV, it's on. <laughs> I was like, too old. It's too old. I was like, let me get Ryan number. Hey, say that again one more time. <laughs> Whatever you said, do it again. Right. He was on the on-site list. Man, yeah, man, well, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> on-site. <laughs> See, that, that's the beauty of it. It wasn't more even about our, what that comment was because <laughs> it's so far gone. It's gone you know, now. he's since okay. seen two at the oh, Pro yeah, Bowl games. And, yeah, it's and gone, they, They're man. all good. But it really was just the highlight, the fact that you defend your guys in the locker room and it's always high praise I got for, for where you at. 
which I, is a great sign of, you know, where you need to be. His arm's too short, though. You sure, huh? bro? His arm's too short. You sure, bro? Yeah. And what, and I'm going to keep him up off here with the jab. I you, 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 don't you just seen can... Mayweather the other day. <laughs> you don't think Rick can throw? Huh? You don't think no, I believe he can fight. I just seen Mayweather the other I believe he can fight, but I saw when LeJarrius got him, it was all about lip. <laughs> <laughs> and well, they did you bad on hey, that. They, they had, they had and when Reek jumped up, when Reek jumped up to push him, he had to jump because he, he wanted to. Cause, hey, because he had wanted to. Yeah, he, they did you bad on. TV, he jumped bro. up to push him. I said, oh, he can't even. He can't even get to his face, man. I was like, shoot, I'm good. I got it just him and two. Hey, Logan Paul, set up the boxing match, man. <laughs> set up the boxing match, man. Like we were talking about the uh, KC to Miami. How, how was that decision made? I'm from Miami. You know, I, we done, I done had you on my radio show yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Like we were, the, the city was jacked up that you made that decision. But how was that decision made? Because like right now, Andy's a, Andy Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. If Andy's sitting around right now, Andy yeah. goes to Hall of Fame. And then you come to Miami. How was that decision made? It was a family decision, man. It was just one of those, you know, um, what's going to be the better long-term situation, you know, for my family, you know, really all of us, you feel me? So we looked at it as, a, as far as like, okay, if we go to Miami, it's going to be a new community, obviously. Um, and you're looking, in, you're looking into getting into like the, the whole brand space, you feel me? Because the brand space in KC is already taken over. Let's be real. Pat, Kelsey. They, they already took that over. You know what I'm saying? So you, you got to look at it as an aspect of, okay, while you're playing and then after you're done playing, is there, you know, a certain area of space that you would like to take up? And I was like, yeah, like, it's just, Miami's perfect. You know, I got family in Miami and there's so much, so, so many opportunities in Miami, especially if we start winning. Because I, I was looking at it automatically, like, look, we're going to win, you know, regardless. And that's going to bring up the momentum of just everything that that I'm trying to get accomplished outside of football. So that, that was really how the decision was made. The money was already good. Like once they said highest paid receiver, I was like, yeah, lock that in. So now <laughs> let's look at the off-field situation. Like how does that look? Like how does our future look? And we talked about it, me, Drew, my wife, and we moved forward with it. It was, not, it was tough now. It was tough now, but. Why was it tough? It was you said just, you were going to get paid no matter what. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, like, this is something that I always dreamed of, getting paid, you know, the highest paid or whatever, man. But it's also tough, you know, leaving leaving back, you know, what we had started, you know what I'm saying, in Kansas City with, with just how special it was, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kansas City was a team that drafted me in the fifth round. That was a team that really gave me my opportunity to to do what I'm about to do now. So it's like just just looking back over all that, man. So it was definitely tough. I'm telling you, it was tough. When we saw you, though, you was like, hey, man, if y'all want the Cat Williams and wide receivers, put me on the show. First off, Cat Williams talked like you had some sense on Club Shay Shay. You've been talking like you had some sense. But what did, what, did you, what did you mean by that, though? Because you have been one to speak your mind about certain things that other players won't. Yeah, man, I, I, I just feel like everybody's opinion should be heard sometimes, like, even though – like, you, you shouldn't be afraid of, you know, another man's judgment, no matter what, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like the only judgment you should be worried about is God's, and that's how I look at it. And when I said I, I'm the, I, I want to be the Cat Williams of the NFL, I mean that. Like, so if y'all ask me a juicy question, shit, I'm going to cross my legs up, and then I'm going to get to talking <laughs> like Cat Williams. Well, I'm going to say, well, um, yeah, we're going to move on. We're going to talk about it. So I do have a, a question about, because Fred mentioned leadership. Um, the stardom of football players now is higher than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. right, you see it with your former teammate, Travis Kelsey. He's transcended oh my God. The, the football field. When you think of paparazzis, gossip blog, all these different things, we see you on there a lot now. Mm -hmm. Whether it be about decision-making that could be true, about your marriage, those things. And then, you know, we walk in that Pro Bowl, and I was like, he looked happy as hell to me. So does his wife look happy as hell. How do you deal now with being a figure that people are going to write about, people are going to talk about, people are going to start rumors about, and how have you handled that inside your home? Well, remember when I said that about going to church, you know, being able to um, go listen to the word of God, and me and my wife, we told each other that we just got to keep our faith strong, man. Like, no matter, you know, what people say about us, it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what happens when people want to, you know, be nosy or try to find out, like, what's really going on, especially with a guy 
with a past like mine, like a lot of people, they want to see, hey, is she happy? Is she okay? Like, and it's like, bro, like at the end of the day, bro, only two things I'm worried about is my wife, A, and then us going to church. And so far, we've been real consistent with that. Granted, so everything else that not happened to us. And like, we don't have a tough 2024, me and my wife. Like, I, I tell her that all the time. I say, look, we don't had our house burnt down, motherfucking in the news about a divorce. It's like, damn, 2024 ain't going how it's supposed to be going. But I know it's for a reason, though. I tell her, like, it's going to be beautiful. The end of all of this is going to be beautiful, and I know it. And maybe we just need a fresh start, just me and you. That's probably what it is, but I haven't laid my hand on it. But People saying you're getting divorced, and it's very public. People now looking at you, looking at her. How do two people deal with that? Just communication, just having open communication. You know, sometimes um, we all know in relationships it's going to be agreements and disagreements, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I made it. I made it to where in, in, in our household that um, there are going to be certain situations where she is always right and and well not right, but I would say she is making like full decisions, and sometimes it's going to be me making decisions. And when we come together, we got to be able to you know agree to disagree. So we just try to live by that, man. Like nobody's right. We always got to have open communication, even when it's tough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And obviously we had conversations about, you know, um, a post-nup. And that was really where it all spiraled from, like a divorce or whatever. I don't like saying that word. But that's really where it all spiraled from. Like, and that All I'm gonna say is, shit get weird is when you tell people outside your family. You feel me? That's, that, that's when shit get weird. Like, so if you telling mom, Dad, sister, hey, post, and eh, da, 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 da. Then they gonna go tell somebody else. Mm -hmm. Then it's gonna go, it's gonna leak out eventually. Yeah. So for us, it's like, we try to keep our right here. You know what I'm saying? We gonna tell y'all what we want y'all to know. And so far it's been good, man. Like we still learning that as we go, cause we still fresh in the marriage thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we try to go to a couples therapy, you know what I'm saying? So we can learn a little bit more. Um, we try to ask other married couples, like, hey, like, certain questions. So we still learning, man. I love the fact that you're trying to, you know, solidify your future by building and strengthening your foundation. And what keeps jumping out, jumping out is faith. I want to I wanna kind of go back, because usually we try to allow our viewers, like, an opportunity to, like, really get to know someone mm -hmm. outside of a football. But, you know, let's pivot. Your journey was a bit different. Like, you yep. had some adverse moments yeah. coming up in a small town, raised by a single mom. Like, take us through those moments where you really had to step out on faith and your upbringing, going to uh, uh, Garden City, you know, CC, and then, you know, kind of lead us through that. Well, me going to Grand Garden City, man, it was, it was something definitely that I didn't want to do at the time, you know, because I was raised by my grandparents and my granddad, he was, he was, he was kind of like me. He was like, he was in, out, he was, he was had a rough life, you feel me? But one thing he made sure to do is take care of all his kids. That's one thing my granddad always did. So go, going to Garden City, I didn't, I really didn't want to do it because, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I was raised by my grandma and I wanted, I wanted to stay around my grandmother and help my grandmother. I told her, I was like, look, I got a job at Wendy's, you know what I'm saying? I can work there for a few years, then I can go to college. You know what I'm saying? But my grandma, she ain't see it that way though. She was like, look, don't worry about me. I was here in this world before you and I'm gonna be here after you. Well, not after you, but she was like, I'm, I was here before you and I figured out or whatever. So I didn't want to go to Garden City at all, man. But it, it was kind of like a moment where like, it was like, bro, if, if I look at my life and where I'm from, there's literally nobody in my city that has made it anywhere, like to the NFL, like anywhere like that's successful. It was just one of those moments where my grandma, she used to pray a lot. She used to say, all right, we're going to pray about it. We prayed about it. I went to Garden City and I didn't like it at first. It was like so far from home. I didn't know nobody. Then that's when I got close with Nick Marshall. Y'all know mm -hmm. I'm Nick Marshall? Yeah. He was a quarterback from Auburn. Me and him got close. And then I was cool then. Like once I seen like other guys from like my, like from like, from like my neighborhood, cause he from like my neighborhood. I was cool. You know what I'm saying? I balled out at Garden City. Then I ended up committing to go to Oklahoma State, went to Oklahoma State for a year. I got in trouble yeah. at Oklahoma State. 
And then transferred, transferred to West Alabama. And I'm in the NFL. It was crazy. I only, I only went to West Alabama for like three months. I didn't go to school or nothing. They was just there for the football team. I literally showed up, <laughs> I literally showed up one day before the first football game. One day before the first football game. No training game. camp, nothing? No training camp, no nothing. I, I, I haven't trained or nothing. Because after I had got kicked out of Oklahoma State, I had sat for like a whole f six months. And I was trying to decide where I wanted to go to school. Because no, no school would take me. I had just got dismissed. So finally, West Alabama, they, the president, he accepted me the day before the game. And they called me. I lived like eight hours away. They was like, can you be here before the first game? I got in my car, me and my grandma, we drove up, got there to the game. I was like, can I play? He was like, yeah, you can play. I was like, I don't know the plays though. He was like, all right, we're gonna put you in a kickoff for prompt return. I had scored two kickoff returns that game. I didn't know what I was out there bit doing. <laughs> I was like, I went out there to the guys. I looked them all in the face. I said, all right, look, y'all just get on somebody, bro. Y'all just touch somebody. That's all I need y'all to do. Took, it, took them to the crib every time. D2 was wild though. It was wild though. Talk a little bit about that, that phone call in the fifth round. You know, you, you mentioned your past earlier. Right. Part of that was a domestic dispute uh -huh. in college. And the reason you weren't at Oklahoma State, and you go to West Alabama, you go to a, an organization who had one of the more horrific domestic violence incidents right. in all of football. Right. What was sort of those conversations about Tyreek, the person, with Andy Reid and the organization when they drafted you? Coach Reid, he, he, he's real honest and upfront with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, one thing he told my parents was, you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna take care of him just like he's my own son. And he, and he held his word too, though. Like, he took care of me and he gave me advice just like he was one of my parents. And that's, that's, that's one of the most admirable things I can, you know, respect, you know, about him as a man, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like he really took care of me, but I really can't speak too much about what he said, but it was just it was just like, you know, like when you come here, like make sure you understand the situation that, that you're in. Right. You feel me? Like we gave a small town kid an opportunity and I don't want you to mess that up. Granted, if you are not on this team, you know what I'm saying? I want you to be successful in this league cuz I know you can. Yeah. So, me and him will have our conversations and chop it up. And that was it, man. Like he was real close to my granddad. Like, my granddad, he's still alive, but, yeah, he, he was real close to my granddad. Like, he make, make sure he all right, because they about around the same age. Yeah. So. How did they find you? Because he was fast. I know, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of people, I he's fast, through. fast. But did you get uh, invited to the combine? No, nah, like, so I didn't you? get invited to the combine. I would have broke that so easy. I would have broke that. I'm so mad. Adidas would have owed me a, uh, what uh, is, is a it island. Four, it's 4 2 4 2, no? two right? 4 2, two John Ross. 4 2, two John Ross. But yeah, Tyreek, you wasn't running four one. Yes, bro. I'm telling you, man. I'm, I was like buck seventy then, <laughs> buck seventy then. So yeah, but I went to like two pro days. So I went to a pro day at uh, University of Alabama, which was 35 minutes from the college I went to, West Alabama. Then I drove to South Alabama pro day, and that's where Kansas City Chiefs was. Mm. You feel me? And I ran a, uh, I think I ran a four two at the South Alabama, and then I was catching the ball. But that's when I played running back, though. I wasn't, I, I wasn't running receiver routes. I was doing all running back stuff. And then I guess when I got to the Chiefs, it was like, we just gonna move you to receiver. And I just worked my tail off to be a receiver. Through the stories you just took it through, you had to doubt yourself at some point. Getting kicked out of school, not, not even being there to play, having to drive eight hours with your grandma uh, to go play in the first game. You had to have doubted yourself at some point. Bro, look, check this out. So when I had got kicked out, like my grandmother, like, I'm gonna tell you, like, I'm gonna tell you how every, like, faith is real. I'm telling you, faith is real. My grandparents, they made sure to put that faith in me all up until my life, man. Like, so when I got kicked out, like, me and my granddad, so my granddad had a job at, like, a sawmill. He was, like, he used to make fences. He will put the, the, the lumber inside of a, a drill and it would do it to work for him. So I ended up getting a job there, you know what I'm saying? Like, right after I got kicked out. Cause I wanted to help my grandma, you know what I'm saying? So my grandma, she back praying. She back praying. Like I'm back going to church, doing my normal thing. I was real embarrassed too though. Mm -hmm. Cause when you get kicked out of school, you're going back to the crib, everybody like, ah, oh, we knew it. Yep. There yeah. you go. Yep. He's back. Yeah. <laughs>
Only took what? Four months? Especially in a small town. Let it go town. to his head. Oh, boy. We knew it. But then when they see you, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You were the one. My mindset it was like me, my, my, me and my grandparents the whole time. You know what I'm saying? And we went to church, we prayed. I had to get a job. Me and my granddad work, wake up at 4 a.m. every morning. We'll go to work, we'll come home by five. And you know, like me and my grandma, we'll just have talks. And I used to just be like, man, like I really think my life is like over. Like I really want to play football. Like that was probably the funnest time I had in my life. She'd be like, yeah, but this is just a test. You know what I'm saying? To really see how strong you is. And like she'll tell me that every day and I'd be like, man, you just talking, man. Like you just talking. And then I just started filling out college applications again. Like, this is when I began to start calling colleges. And I, I, I got a lot of no's, a lot of mm -hmm. no's. Like, yeah, you real talented, but just can't take you because of the kind of the incident that you had. You know what I'm saying? So when West Alabama called me, I was like, hey, can you be here in two hours? I'm on the way. <laughs> No questions asked, but there was some moments in there where it was like, I really think I'm done, bro. Like, I really think I'm just, I'm just another person, you know what I'm saying? From my hood who, who just didn't make it, you know what I'm saying? Like he let everything get to him. He let the girls get to him. He let his friends get to him. He let going out, you know what I'm saying? Having a good time instead of pri prioritizing the things that are most important, you know what I'm saying? Get to him. And, it's just all full circle. And now it's like, now I know though, but I, I, I what, did have some weak moments in there. What is Tyreek Hill doing if he doesn't get the call from West mm -hmm. Alabama? Probably going where, into where the, the Army, man. Really? Probably going into the Army. You feel me? I don't know. I'm probably on somebody's block smoking weed every day, selling drugs, I don't know. Just being another fast hood hero, like, hey, that dude plays semi-pro? Yeah, he run a 4-2. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, that dude. Do you ever think about that and, and really reflect on the, the blessing that it is to be where you are? Yes, sir. Every day. And that's probably why, you know, I play, I, I play the way I play, man, because God has, has really brought me through the storm for real. It really brought me through the storm, like everything I've been through. And I make sure that, you know, um, I just thank them by mm -hmm. just working hard and, and just trying to inspire the youth. Like Ray Lewis said something to me. Well, he said something to the whole AFC locker room, Ray Lewis did. He was like, every time you walk out that door, make sure you know that you're not doing it for you no more. You're doing it for those little kids that's watching all across the world. You're doing it for the fans that support you and pay their hard earned money. So make sure, you, before you walk out of that door, on your high horse, you know it's not about you. And that's something that I live by every day. Like, I, I've been living like that, you feel me? Because I could have been on the streets, I could have been, Lord knows well, man, but here I am, right here. I'm, I'm standing right here in front of y'all, talking to y'all, small town kid, talking to you guys. After everything I've been through, man, after everything I've done, like God has blessed me with just so much, man. And that's why I said 2024, me and my wife, I'm gonna commit my life to God. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be tough. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have some temptations in there where it's like, oh, I gotta reflect back. But I, got, I gotta stay the course, man. Cause what you just said, like I gotta, I gotta be, I gotta be mindful of everything, man. As you're, sit, as you're sitting here, you're, you're starting to remind me a lot of, um, a lot like Jalen Ramsey. You know, two guys, both of you guys have won Super Bowls. That's my came guy. in with a little bit more edge. You know what I'm saying in your young, uh, younger uh, career. Yeah. Um, what are the conversations like in the locker room with Jalen? Man, about winning all the time. You know um, how we can get the team better. You know, or whether that's us going at it at practice, me and him every day to show the guys that you can never shy away from competition, or you know, just trying to find you know different ways for the team to come together so we can win a playoff game, man. And you know. Um, me and him, we really take pride in going, going against each other in front of the whole team. Like, we really do. Because it's like, bro, like, you can't be scared to lose reps. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to have reps where you lose. You're going to have reps, you know, where they may not go your way. But it's all about, you know, how you bounce back and come back and do it the next play, bro. Mm -hmm. And that's really why Mike, I feel like, brought both of us, man. Because mm -hmm. both of us are so fundamentally and technically 
technical with our craft, it's like now we got to step into that role of teaching all the guys around us. Like I got to, I'm teaching Waddle like how to be a pro. I'm teaching Waddle, you know, how to play a full 17 game, 18 game season, bro. Like, cause he's he's very important. I feel like he's yeah, just yeah. as important as as I am. You feel me? Like he's he's that dude. And I want to see him succeed. I want to see him get paid. I want to see him, you know, win games. Like I want to, I want, I want all the guys on the team to have the same feeling I had back when we won the Super Bowl. That's the best feeling ever, man. And that's something that I don't know. It, it, it just felt amazing, man. So that's what yeah, I want we, for all the guys. We we definitely know about that, Tyreek. Uh, that amazing feeling. Not everybody here in our presence. Oh, really? Under understands. God damn. That's Reed. like. Go ahead, it's your turn, Chan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that mama got a Super Bowl ring. He want to just always throw it at us. Hey, that Super Bowl ring feel good, man. I'm telling you, man. It's it's different. It is. Now, what would you rather have, a Super Bowl ring, or would you rather have a um, hundred million dollar contract? Two Super Bowl rings. Oh, hundred million dollars. <laughs> that's, all, that's all we needed was that nod. <laughs> I didn't agree. I just shook his hand. Though. I just shook his hand. <laughs> but see, you can say that when you got both. What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, when yeah, I got yeah, the right. ring and hundred mil. Trifecta. And, 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 and uh, capitalize on both of it. Well, you talking about 2024? Like I said, I'm down in Miami there. Uh huh. But I'm sitting there one day on radio, and the whole thing is about your goddamn house being on fire. Bro, <laughs> what the hell happened? Bro, I was at practice when it happened. Shit, crazy. First of all, I just want to say, Rick Ross, bro, I don't, I can't vibe with you now, bro. I can't fuck with you no more, bro. Oh, my grandparents calling. Hello? What's up? What, what time we gonna meet in the left? Oh, uh, let me let me call you back. <laughs> let me call you back, please. I love y'all. <laughs> hey, what time we gonna be in Atlanta? Hey, you know, grandparents but, talk loud too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on that phone. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Rick Ross, man. Like you ain't even come over. You had the audacity to talk to a fireman instead of come take. You got my number, bro. You get on Twitter, post me all over Twitter. Like after what me and my family went through. You supposed to be the neighbor, the neighborhood hero. But yeah, man, uh, I was Freddy at practice. Freddie lived there too. You hey, know that's him. funny. Freddie lived there too. You saw my story? Oh, OK. You see me say anything. He didn't say nothing. <laughs> I didn't say I, a I thing. Getting the, I was getting the updates. Andy yeah. hit my line. By the time I got out there, it was 16 fire trucks. Bro. I was in the house. I was actually on the treadmill uh, doing some cardio. I went out there. I'm like, what the fuck? I walked down. I'm like, oh, no, this ain't good. And then she was trying to get to work. And you know, I seen Rose over there. Uh, I think it might be electrical because the smoke is dark. And, and, and then you want to say something about Wingstop on there. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what's going on? Don't try to use me for promotion, bro. Yeah, no, I see Rose me? back there, but I was like, man, and then the next thing you know, I'm on the neighborhood, the community group me, and they're talking about, well, now we got to have, because we got 24-hour armed security. There's like, we got to get three of them in here. We got to pay extra, and we got to do this and that, because fans start showing up. Bro. The news people out there for three days. I'm like, I ain't going to smoke. was out for a minute, bro. And What's going on? To be honest, bro, like, I was at work, and I still don't got the full story. I still don't got the full story. Like, I'm asking everybody in the house, what's going on? Everybody looking at me crazy. You feel me? So... Going through that feeling right there, though, it was like the worst thing ever, though, because it's like everything that you work hard for, you know what I'm saying? The people, because I, I had it like my mom, my nephews, my sister, I had everybody living with me, you know what I'm saying? And my wife, she was gone at the moment, and it's like people won't take care of your stuff the same way, you know what I'm saying, you would. And it's like, bro, like, that's the most hurtful feeling ever. Like, I, I try to, like, be that nice guy where I, like, take care of my family and help them out a little bit, but it's like, damn, bro, like, can you at least take care of my the stuff that I work hard for, please. And it, it always comes back to the fact that the good thing is it's isolated to that location. And, and thank God, yeah, nobody everybody was, was safe. Correct, that because was it's all thing. material at the, at the very end of the day. Mm -hmm. But man, it was, I'm like, fuck, please don't let it fucking burn down completely. Yeah, that was it. A, it, looked, it looked pretty bad. That was a big thing. I was at practice, I was running a route too. Like I ran a route, cause I, like when I practice, I, I, got, I got my Apple Watch on. And I'm at, when I'm running them out, I'm looking at my watch. My wife, she called me like 10 times. I'm like, ah, oh, she ain't want that. Then a message popped up. She said, the house is on fire. I said, house on fire. As soon as I turned around, like the, the, the Miami Dolphin security guy, Drew, Drew Brooks was right there. He was like, Reek, let me tell you something. 
He's like, your house on fire. I took off running to the locker room. I'm saying I took off running to the locker room, got in my car, went home, and I was like, oh my God. Then I seen everybody safe. I was like, okay, everybody good. But it was, it was definitely hard though. But the fact that he said Rose, they said something about wing stop. <laughs> they got thighs now. <laughs> it, it, it was all over the internet, like all the blog sites. The news gave your actual address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was man. crazy, bro. They, they gave the you, exact location. I'm sorry to tell you, bro. Like, we probably gonna have to move from there, bro. Yeah. It's all it good, bro. Much, you know how it goes. You're gonna get a bag for the crib. You can't have money out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. you gonna get a bag. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah we can't, have, you can't have money out there. The boys are rich. <laughs> I'm about to live on the outskirts my, oh my. Of, of, of that. We had to go in together. Yeah. We're going to take the left wing. <laughs> I'm gonna talk, be, the good thing, y'all on a permanent list, both of y'all. So we y'all welcome that. back anytime. It'd be so hard bro. to get y'all gate. You mentioned Jalen. When you got down, when he started to get healthy, you know, and you were on your streak of playing the way you were on your way to two Gs, I texted him. I was like, say, bro. I was like, have you, I was like, what is Tyreek doing differently than other receivers? And you know how Jail had taught, he said, he said, man, it's like nothing I've ever seen. And you know how Jalen is, he said, and this from somebody that think he could lock him up. Yeah. You know what I mean? When Jalen says something like that about you, who was just coming from a team with Cooper Cup and OBJ, who was going crazy mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl, you're in your honest opinion, with the Justin Jeffersons, the Jamars, the Devontae's, all of these players. Is it Tyreek Hill and everybody else when it comes to the wide receiver position? Yes. And, and I say that because of I can do based some of everything that they can do, but I feel like they can't do exactly what I can do. You feel me? There's value in the return game. There's value in, you know, coming out the edge to block a kick. Like whatever you need. Like in KC I was on I was on the unside kick team. Like I'm 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 on I, I want to do everything. Like what whatever position is needed on the football field, Tyreek Hill want to do. I don't care how much money I make. Like I want to I want to add value to this team some kind of way because you can always use some speed somewhere. You know what I'm saying? That's my mindset. Like when I came in I was a gunner. Like so I'm still in that mindset of, "Hey coach, let me go in and get some gunner reps sometime, bro." Like let me let me go in there and feel this ball at the one yard line for for the defense, man. Let let me be that guy. So that's why I say I'm the best receiver at I can block, I can what catch, what, what you want to do, high ball, I can do that, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So how much do you feel people fear you? His he says his best receiver was Randy Moss mm -hmm. or the greatest receiver, and I played Randy Moss. There was a level of fear when you walked on to the field. It feels the same way in the way defenses play you. Do you have that feeling of, okay, when I'm out here, they understand it. Like, like they get it. They know who I am. It be sometimes, like, when you play against a team like the Chiefs, like, when, like when we played against the Chiefs, it was one third down. Like, we was, like, in the middle of the field. They had two corners in front of me, and then a safety over top. I was like, yo, like, <laughs> do, do, what do I do? <laughs> And, and the thing about it was I was in the slot. So think about being in the slot with two dudes over you, the defensive end in here. Like, so you can't release inside. You can't release outside because the outside receiver was there. It's like, what do I do at that point, bro? Yeah. You feel me? So as far as fear, I don't, I, don't, I really don't know, man, because, like, we got too many weapons on the offense. You feel me? So many, it's so, it's so many, you know, people that can, you know, make an impact on this offense that you just can't key in on one guy. You got so many other guys. Now, That'd be great if they keyed in on them, so that way I can eat. <laughs> you ain't sneaking around nowhere. That little fast dash. <laughs> they don't see you out there. Right, but, but I got, I gotta, I gotta ask about uh, Mike, the Cat Williams. You said if mm -hmm. I ask some juicy stuff, you give us something. You speak about the Chiefs, right? Did you ever see Travis Kelsey? With Taylor Swift. Why are you trying to get me canceled like a bit by these Swifties, <laughs> boy? You say you say you say you gonna give it to him. I need it. Did you ever see that happen? Hell no, I didn't see that happening, man. <laughs> Hell no, I didn't see that happening, man. I, I think he's just like uh I don't know, bro. <laughs> nah, uh I didn't see it happen, bro. Happening, bro. I thought uh Kayla, Kayla and Kelsey was gonna stay together for a minute though. But uh Kelsey he he got that swag where like he can like interchange though like he got that he got that swag where he can be you know what I'm saying with, with a black beautiful queen or he can got, he got that swag where he can be with like 
you know. The biggest pop star the in the world? Too. Yeah, the other side too. I don't even want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Well, let's pivot. <laughs> I had big... to go, man. It surprised me. <laughs> nah, that's a great surprised question. Hell, he said that. He said throw it out there. Yeah. But now nah, let's pivot. RC say the biggest. You've watched the show, so you should be ready for this. Your biggest pivot in life. You know, that one defining moment that allows you to be the person who you are now. I say uh, when I got dismissed from Oklahoma State, that's probably like the biggest moment of my life where it's a big moment because it's like a lot of moments that, that, that happened in that big moment. Just being kicked out, me being able to go back home, you know, find my true self with my grandparents, me having to get a job, and then just sit in that whole entire period just thinking about what, you know, I've done. You know what I'm saying? And me being able to go back to college and then just be, be so grateful for, for just everything. You know what I'm saying? Because I tell you, boy, at the Bedlam, because that's when I got dismissed, like right at the Bedlam game. At the, at the Bedlam, man, my whole life completely changed. You know what I'm saying? Because that's like a big deal. And uh, for, the, for the Big 12, Oklahoma State versus OU. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I had scored a big touchdown, returned a kick. My life it was changing. It was trending up. You know what I'm saying? But what we don't realize is that in, the, in that exact moment, it can be trending down too, though, with just one bad mistake. And like a lot of people, a lot of athletes really, like we don't, we don't think like that. It's like it, we just all about, oh, I'm in this moment, I'm in this moment, instead of just thinking about, hey, God can take it away from you too. The same way he'll give it to you, he'll take it away from you. Just that fast. And I had that moment where I, I needed that. I needed that, man. I have a question that I wanted to ask. It didn't flow in this way. Patrick Mahomes, uh -huh. right? I think, you know, you made some statements that drew some ire because you said that Tua Tungvaloa was the most accurate quarterback you played with. And, but that's not the only skill a quarterback needs to have. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Right. And, and being in the locker room with him, bro, being on the field with him, you know, he's on a trajectory that has the possibility of being the greatest quarterback He ever. will be. How do you, when you look at his play and that dude, What's your first thoughts about Patrick Mahomes? I ain't gonna lie, Pat, Pat, he a different dude, bro. Like, he, he, he obviously the best quarterback in the league. You know, what I said about Tua being the most accurate, you know what I'm saying? Like, this year, and I'm gonna talk about Tua, then I'm gonna get back to Patrick. Yeah. This year for Tua, like, this is like a build-on season because mm -hmm. this is obviously his best, se his best season of his career. You know what I'm saying? So we gonna go from accurate to being that, that fearless, Cocky, well, not not really cocky, but you know the way what I'm he saying? plays the game. Though. Yeah, That's, like yeah. the way you the play Aaron's, the game. Like Aaron Rodgers, Tom he, Brady. He gonna man. he gonna continue to add on to his game. You feel me? Right. Like, cause he cause he got the skill set, and he got the supporting cast to do it. You feel me? With all the weapons that he got around him. Now Pat, Pat a different dude, and I'm gonna tell you how he's a different dude. Um, we I can't remember what year it was, but we was like on a bad streak. All like his supporting cast were playing bad. Me, Kelsey, all of D. Rob. Me call we Sammy. We always playing bad. This dude called the whole offense up. <laughs> he called the whole offense up. Uh, this was like on a Tuesday, I believe. He called us all up. He cussed all of us the fuck out. Like, and me and Pat, we 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 go back and forth. Yeah. But that was a moment right there where like he stood on business and it was like, bro, I really respect this because he really just called out all his fucking weapons, individually pointed us out, looked us in the fucking eyes, and said, bro. Reed, you think you so fucking fast, but you can't catch the fucking ball. You want to be the best receiver in the game. And he, 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 he was letting me have it. Then he went to Kelsey. Then he went to D-Rob. Then he went to uh, Sammy. Like He went to all of us, calling us all out. And in that moment right there, I was like, yo, it's go time now. Like, that put so much, like, that, that put so much, like, I don't know what it put in my, fuel in my heart, bro. Like, that next game, that's when we, be, we, we begin to get things rolling because you never want to get called out by the leader of your team like that. You don't. Yeah. You don't. And it's like, bro, That's just good. I'm not going to let nobody die in this circle right here no more. And we start killing after that. And that's one thing that our quarterback, he going he gonna to add, you know what I'm saying, to her. Because with Pat, we all had a relationship with Pat. Like, we all hang out. We all, you know, yeah. do stuff outside of football. And in Miami, we're still building that. You know what I'm saying? It, it hasn't got to that yet. But I feel... I'm. I'm telling you, this year it's gonna get to that. Cause I, I like we we done had some battles in there, you know what I'm saying already. But it ain't been a battle where it's like we can have a conversation 
But then we can come back the next play and be like, hey, bro, I think you should do that. You know what I'm saying? It's been, nah, fuck you. And then I'll talk to you later. You know what I'm saying? Or the next week. And we don't need that. It need to be like, yeah. look, bro, we need to do this. Yada, yada, yada. You need to get open. I need to be better. And then we need to come back and then talk about it, not have grudges against each other. Because yeah. we all trying to win. That's the best we thing. We all trying to win, man. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Being able to have them tough conversations, you know what I'm saying, is, is, is needed, I feel like, bro. Because that got us better when Pat did it. Yeah. It made me want to kick his ass, but it got, made me want to get better, man. <laughs> my, my last question would be this, Rick. You, some, when we sit down with people, you have this preconceived notion of what they might be like, and then you sit with them for an hour, and you're like, oh, dude's nothing like what people have paid him to be. And we try to do a deeper dive into just the human. What is something that you think people don't know about you that you'd like them to know? I don't know, man. I'm, I'm old school. I was raised by my grandparents, you know? So I, I try to live, live life like the old school way. I'm very cheap. I don't spend much money. Um, yeah, I, I, that's it. That's really all I got. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> if you my don't dog. spend no money, you fend it out. Right, right here? He probably got sponsored, man. He, <laughs> he's, that's Super Bowl money. <laughs> yeah, he like, he like the, the 15 best receiver in the game. You know they gave that to him for free. Hold up. Limitless, take a stomach cow, pin in it. I fought the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on this vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless, take a stomach cow, pin in it. I fought the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up.